Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location at Sweet Hollywood Candy Store in Hollywood, California. Today we have a very, very special episode. I'm so excited. Today we're going to be talking about the industry. Fame or shame? Is the struggle worth the price? We have some three very special guests that are going to be stopping by the show today to give their take on how they started off in the industry and how they ended up where they were. And through the pains and struggles, is it worth it? Is the struggle worth the price? Um, we're streaming live at WCOBM.TV. Um, also, check us out on Facebook at The Sherrard Show. Just look at the mic, The Sherrard Show, to be able to watch the episode in its entirety. Also, The Sherrard Show is sponsored today by the Kidney Foundation. Uh, the Kidney Foundation, um, I'm a member, where they fight to find a cure every day. And then also, it's sponsored by Sir Richard Suits. Um, one of my uh, designers, I'm um, actually one of his attires right here, so you want to definitely uh, visit sirsuits.com to pick up your suit today. Well, in this industry of fashion, entertainment, and, industry, and uh, music, it's very interesting that there's a poll in Italy out there. I don't know if you know it, but 30,000 people a month move out here to Los Angeles, California, all with hopes of dreams and aspirations to be the be next Holly Berry, next Denzel Washington next Merle Street, so on and so forth. But many times those dreams crash and burn and people end up homeless, broke, doing things they never thought they would ever have to do. So my subject today is we're gonna be asking you back home and interviewing three wonderful people who've struggled, who've survived, and now they're telling their story. So I want you all to tune in today as we speak to an awesome, awesome um, designer. This man is just, he's been uh, designing for years. He has an awesome collection. I'm going to be wearing one of his, his outfits uh, later on in the show. Mr. Perry White will be stopping by the show. And then we have a lovely young lady. This young lady is so tall and so beautiful. She stands about six foot four, six foot five. And she's model of the year, ladies and gentlemen. And she's also going to be modeling in New York Fashion Week. Just a bright, beautiful future for this young lady. Jasmine will be stopping by the Sherrard Show. Show. And then we have a man, the man who actually was the drummer for the iconic Michael Jackson. Mr. Jonathan Muffet will be stopping by the show. And then we have a very special track that we're going to be playing for an iconic singer. He's so iconic. He, uh, he wasn't able to stop by the show, but I was speaking to him today, Mr. Mel Carter. He's going to be, uh, I have a, he's a track he sent me that's an anthem to stop the violence. So we have so much to talk about on the Sherrard Show. Um, up next is our first guest. You don't want to miss us again, WCOBM.TV. Right here to my right, after this commercial break, will be the lovely Jasmine. I'm Sherrard. We'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard, live on location. I'm in beautiful Hollywood, California. I'm so excited because this topic is a very hot topic that many people have been asking me about. They said, Sherrard, you know, um, tell me about in, in, when you started off as a model, when you started off as acting, is it really worth it, the struggle, or should I just give up? So I said, you know what, not only am I going to answer that question, I'm going to have some wonderful people who've gone through it likewise to answer that question. And so this wonderful young lady to my right, um, she's a model. She's been modeling since she's been 13 years old. Yeah. This is the one I was speaking about that stands about six foot four. Uh, she's also model of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. So without further ado, Mrs. The one and only Jasmine <laughs> Monet. Soon they're going to be saying Jasmine Money. Yeah. Well. Jasmine <laughs> Monet. Welcome uh, to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. You have such a lovely, warm spirit about you. First Thank of all, you. she modeled in my show um, May 19th. Yes. Um, she brought the house down, Thank and now you. she's on the Sherrard show. So tell me a little bit about what you've been up to since the last time we spoke. Wow. Um, I've been getting into preparation for New York Fashion Week and um, possibly Paris Fashion Week. Um, I've been going to SMC, doing a little school on the side, and um, just really practicing on my craft and always making it the best it can. So now, with you starting off at 13 years old, um, tell me a little bit about your journey to how you arrived to be model of the year. Um, so I always knew when I was younger that this is something that I wanted to do, modeling, that this was my passion. Um, at 13, I remember like it was yesterday, I seen my mom on the runway for the last time. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do for like a long, long time. So mom burned up the runway? Oh. Burned it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and she put me in my first show, 
Worldwide Fuse It. Um, it was here in Dallas, or in Dallas, and it was a huge, huge show. It was like a retirement show, but she was doing that to let me know how it would be and to see if this is really something I want to do and invest my time in. And after the show, I was like, yes, I really, I still want to do this, I want to do this. And she's like, okay, and we went from there. And we've been through so much, but we have also been blessed so much. So like the, the things we've been through are learning experience for things that are gonna come in the future. So it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a journey, but it's been a good one. That's an awesome way to look at things now. Um, the fact that what you go through are things based upon that's gonna help you build your character yes. and things like that. So tell me some of the things that you had gone through. Now it's obvious if somebody tells you you're not model material, they just jealous of you. <laughs> but what are some of the things that you heard or some of the things you had gone through um, in your early journey leading up to now? Um, so far, it's just been with with certain agencies and hearing the word no a lot, or that I'm too tall a lot. And it's crazy because when you study modeling and you see other models, they're pretty tall. So you're wondering like, what is it really about me that they don't like? You know, and, and it wrecks your brain until you come together with yourself and be one with yourself and have that confidence in yourself to understand that that one no just leads you to that one yes that's gonna open so many more doors for you. And um, I, had to, I had to face that when I came to LA and I went into a modeling agency and they just told me no. And I was like, okay. And like, I, I did cry. My mom was like, don't cry, baby. That no was just leading you to that one yes. And then that's when I met um, BNTME, Divine Dawson. Um, he signed me and I was like, oh my gosh. And he was the first model agency to sign me in LA and actually believe in me and push me and have me working great. And I, I've done a lot of stuff in LA I'm in magazines, I'm on websites and it's just like, that's crazy. To you know, and, that. and that's awesome because um, ever since uh, the fashion show that you're in, um, I'm hearing you've been so busy with your work and I'm just all these gigs you've been booking. Is that correct? Yes, I've been extremely busy. Um, some of the busy has been just studying on my craft. The other busy has been um, doing photo shoots for websites, doing runway shows for this and that, and um, meeting a lot of new people, getting connections. That's, that's the most important thing in LA is connections. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's, that's been taking up most of my time. So, so with all the things that you've gone through, um, shed some light on tonight's topic. Is the um, struggle really worth the price? My grandma and my mother told me this one saying that nothing worth having comes easy. And I've learned that that to be so true through life and it's nothing truer than that. So on our journey, I'm saying our, me and my mom, on, my, on our journey to um, LA, California, my mom drove 20 hours straight, no sleep, all the way from Texas to California because she believed in me and I believe that this is where I needed to be to um, go further in my career and my dream. Boy, a mother's love. I tell you, she <laughs> yes. went 20 hours back. And the funny thing about it, I've never known that Dallas or, or Texas was 20 hours from California. I know, so right. what, what happened there? We had to ask mama and bring her on the show to find oh, out why she's driving 20 man. hours. But she did it for you. For me. And now here you are right now. Isn't that and awesome? Now here I am um, on our way to New York Fashion Week, something I always watch on TV as a kid and say, I'm going to do that one day. And now it's happening. Well, thank God. Now, is mom yes. driving from California to New York? No. <laughs> no, not this time. We're taking the plane this time. Yeah, that's second. That's awesome. So, um, but there's people right now who do not have your height, right. do not have your look, right. but they want to be models. And they want, and they feel that they have it. They have this passion, this dream to be this model um, on a runway, on a cover of a magazine, etc. Mm -hmm. So what kind of advice would you give that person who may not have the, um, born blessed with the intangibles you have, but they have that passion? So here's the thing with modeling. You do not have to be six feet and up to do every kind of modeling. There's runway, there's print, um, there's, there's TV, there's all types of modeling. Now for print, you don't have to be six four and up or even six feet and up. You can be as short as maybe five seven, five six, which print, I've done print, I've done all of it. Print is, is, is really fun. So that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, the struggle part of it, just take it and and look, try to always look at the bright side of it. Because there's always, always, always a lesson in everything you go through in life. And when you come out on the other side, 
it's nothing that feels greater than that. And you have to always remember that this is something that you really want to do and this is your passion and that you can't only really be doing it for yourself, but you have to find that one thing that drives you to do it for however long it takes until you get to that point. And never really have a point. Always want to make it better or go further in it and do more things, accomplish more things, because then it, it makes it more exciting and worth the struggle that you're going through. Well, she sounds like a first lady, doesn't she, ladies and gentlemen? Um, and I'm telling you, <laughs> she's backing up somebody's president. I love it. Now, um, so Jasmine, when we come back, I want to ask you a subject, a, a topic about, uh, or a question about the runway. What was one of the toughest things you had to face um, when you were out there on that runway? But don't answer now. Okay. We're, I'm Sherard. We'll be right back after this. More with Jasmine. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, live on location at the Sweet Hollywood Candy Store. And the reason why we're here at the Sweet Hollywood Candy Shop is because this is where the Sherrard Show candy bar is being sold. And the reason or the um, purpose of the Sherrard Show candy bar, now I know you all were watching the episode when I was speaking about this um, in regards to my mother and my brother who passed away from kidney disease. But I want to kind of uh, revisit that. Um, this candy, with this candy bar, this is in the on, honor and loving memory of my mom and brother who passed away from kidney failure um, eight years ago. So by purchasing the candy bar, every one dollar made goes back to the Kidney Foundation for Fight for the Cure. So please purchase yours today for support of it. It tastes great, but even if you're not a chocolate lover, um, when you purchase it, it's um, going back to fighting the, for the cure. We all know someone who had kidney disease, renal failure, or some kind of illness, but this is in support of that, so you definitely want to support um, that. Go to my website, come to Sweet Hollywood Candy Store. Um, we're on 6801 um, Hollywood Boulevard. I'd love to um, autograph it, um, show your support and love. I appreciate that. Now back to this lovely young lady before we went to our commercial break. Um, I was asking you a question, Jasmine. And the question was, what was the uh, toughest thing you ever had to face out there in the runway as a model? Okay, so um, being a model, it's not only about having a pretty face. Your body is a machine. You have to keep it fueled. You have to keep it healthy. You have to keep it strong. So um, one of my challenges on the runway, I wore a size 11 in shoes. Um, and that's kind of rare. So not, not all designers have that size. Um, I did a show in Dallas for Dwight Evans, and um, I had to wear a size, I believe it was a six. Whoa! Now, mind you, <laughs> I wear a size 11, but this is my passion, this is what I love to do. I'm only gonna be out there for like, what, four minutes tops, right? So, so, so wait a minute, you had to walk in a six? Yes, I had to walk in the six. <laughs> um, and the heel was like, really 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 skinny and um, I don't know if anyone has ever seen those videos on Instagram where they're like models worst field and they're like falling on the road that was almost me almost me but thank god my body is strong enough to handle it so I was out there on the runway and I was walking and it was like concrete and I was walking and my ankles started getting weak and I was like oh no I have to get back and get backstage really fast or this is going to be a disaster but um Thank goodness, I made it through the whole thing, and I got back there, and I was like, I can't do these shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do those I, shoes, I huh? can't do these shoes, but luckily that was like the last outfit, so I made it through five changes in those size sixes, yeah. mm -hmm. and at the end, my body was like, it's not going to happen anymore. But well, you know, what, you know the awesome thing is that um, the Sherrard Show will be in New York. Um, we will be covering Fashion Week um, in September, God willing, so well, I'm definitely going to be looking for you. I know there's many a shows out there, but I'm going to definitely be looking for you out there um, on the runway as well. Maybe we can get you an interview as well. Now, what kind of advice would you be able to give to someone out there who's um, starting out in the industry um, and wants to just be able to get the right connections? Because I know probably when you started off, you probably got to deal with a lot of people who kind of scam you and rip you off and stuff. So give some advice to those newcomers out there. Okay. My, my advice is always do your homework. Never take what you see first as a guarantee. Always do your homework. Look the people up through multiple different websites, see what people have to say. If they're reputable, they always have someone who leaves um, comments. Yeah, comments and uh, things like that on them. So go through them, look, look them up, see what they've been doing, how long they've been doing the business, things like that. And then you should be able to make a, a pretty hefty decision off of what you find. Um, luckily, I 
learned from my mom how to look all this stuff up and how to do all this stuff, and it's uh, a life and lifesaver. It's a life changer. That is huge because so many people will um, glitter, yeah. but they're not gold. Mm -hmm. And they'll turn around and sell you something, and you, before you know it, you know, you're buying in a dream that's not legit at all. So last question for you, young lady. I know you're busy, and I really appreciate you stopping by the show. So tell us, where can your fans be able to keep up with you um, and see what you got going on and what's the next big thing you have going on? Um, you guys can keep up with me on my Instagram. It's called Jazz Monet, J-A-Z-Z-M-O-N-E-E. -E. Jazz Monet on Instagram and Jasmine Collins on Facebook. Jasmine is spelled J-A-Z-Z-M-A-N, Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S. And I'm sure the next time she comes on the Sherrard show, she's probably going to be some big superstar and be like, Sherrard, who? No, But no. we really appreciate you stopping. Never. But you know, one thing also is, I've had a lot of celebrities and big time people on the show, but one person, and you're very unique, that I've never had on the show, um, is the model of the year. So oh, we really yes. appreciate you stopping by um, the show. This is Jasmine. We'll see her and then pick up our interview when we get to New York, and she's in New York Fashion Week. And when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a gentleman and a scholar that's going to stop by the show. Mr. Perry White um, is going to be stopping by the show. And this man looks like he's so wise and so insightful. Can't wait to speak to him. We'll be right back right after this. So when they tried and they made arrangements for me to do the audition, and I went to Havenhurst, and over the garage there's a recording studio. And upstairs, over the garage, there's also a museum. So I went into the re recording studio with them, and they had everybody set up there to play and, and play Jackson songs. Uh, of course, I was a big fan of the Jackson Five too, as well like everybody was at the time. So we started playing Jackson songs. Now Jackie was there, Marlon was there, Tito was there, Randy was there. What about Joe? Was he in the father? Joseph was in the house out outside. He was outside roaming the grounds, and I had to say he was in the house. I talked to him afterwards when the brothers decided to be my drummer. Mm -hmm. So I went over Jackson's song with him, and of course, like everybody, and man, back then, you had to know Jackson five songs because they were so popular. Right. I knew the beats, I loved them just like the record. They were like marveling how, how I played them like the record. So I'm very meticulous about that. And then they came down to the song on the new single. They said, okay, well, you played all that stuff for free. And um, they said, well, we got one song. Tito was you know, on his guitar and said, I got one song you gotta play, we wanna see if you can do this. Mm -hmm. He shifted around, he said, every other drummer came in and they had to play this. And come to find out, every drummer had trouble with this song because it was it was a song to shake your body down to the ground. Ah. On shake your body down to the ground, mm -hmm. the drummer on the on the song played three different parts, overdubs, that made when you put it together made the beat. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't play it all at the same time. So they had to do the hi-hat overdub, the main beat and then some time beats. Well, sometimes ignorance being bliss, you were back in New Orleans as a young guy, you listen to the record, you said, man, that's an incredible beat, how the guy's doing that? So I gotta, if he's doing it, I gotta learn how to do it. If he can do it, I can do it. So I sat there and figured out the movements of the arms to make and manifest that beat to happen. I scientifically, mentally thought it through, and next thing I know, I'm playing the beat without missing any beats. Whoa, and that really it impressed them. So when he, Tito thought he had me, he said, oh, we're going to see if you can play Shake Your Body now. I said, okay. He said, you know that song? And I said, yeah, I know that song. And he said, what? You know that song? I said, yeah, I know that song. He said, you can play Shake Your Body now. I said, yeah, I can play Shake Your Body now. I'm playing the cops. He said, oh, we're going to see if you can play it. He said, they thought they had me. So uh, we <laughs> counted it off, and we start playing Shake Your Body now, and all of a sudden we're playing it, and they're like looking at each other. And then Randy comes over looking at me and looking at the set. And looking at what I'm doing, I'm crossing my arms to make the beat happen. I'm playing it all at once. And then, then Randy looked and he said, oh, 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 no. He turned around and said, no, no, no. He said, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. And I said, what? He said, uh, I said, am I messing up? He said, no, no, play that again, play that again. I'm saying to myself, man, I must be screwing up bad. He stopped us. And he said, play it again. He said, no, just you. And I started playing it again like I play it, like I learned it. And he said, oh, my, he grabbed his face. Oh, my God, he turned around. He said, I can't believe this. I said, what, am I missing? Let's get up. Then he said, no, no, sugar, but you don't understand. Put his hand on my shoulder and said, you don't understand. That was a three-part overdub we did in the studio. The drummer couldn't play it by all one time. And here you playing everything all at one time. Right. We can't believe that. And then other guys were like, man, we can't believe it. How are you doing that? And then he, he said, play it really slow. I demonstrated he, he was shocked. He said, you're our drummer. 
Whoa. That, beat, that beat is what solidified me becoming a Jackson drummer because, like I said, sometimes even with being bliss, I thought the drummer on the record did the same thing. They were mm-hmm. mm-hmm. playing it all at once, not knowing the truth and the reality of it. Um, being ignorant to that fact, I just learned how to do it. Challenge myself and figure it out. And that solidified me becoming a Jackson drummer. Your friend said, You have a drummer, you have a drummer. Jermaine's not hitting you. So, of course, so. I, no, were they at odds? I'm, I'm sorry. Were the Jacksons at odds with the Jer- Jermaine? No, not necessarily so, oh, but okay. he had, Jermaine had started his own solo career when he had split from the full time. And he had to put his band and show together his albums together. So they were separate entities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They found Jermaine, I told him, was trying to bought me out. Not bought me out, but sent for me to come out. And um, so they said, no, he's not getting you. You're out, drummer. Now nah, we got you. He should have called you when he had a chance. And so I don't know what this mirror up on top of the wall I found out much later from their cousin. He said, Michael's always up there. He just don't tell the wife because he's shy. And so he's probably there. He said, look, I'm almost certain Michael's there watching everything <laughs> and spying down on everything. And he, he has to give them final approval. So when I finished, Jermaine's, and Randy said, you're out, drummer. They said, come on, you got to go outside and talk to Joseph. So apparently they had signal Joseph, and I walked out the door, and Joseph was pacing around in the yard waiting for me. And then he talked, he said, my boys really like you. They think you really can be a dead drummer. They want you to be a dead drummer. They sold on you. He said, would you like to play with my son? This is my boys. And I said, yeah, I would love to play, to play with Michael and brother. Wow. He, said, he said, yes. He said, well, they really want you. They really think you're their, you're their drummer. They want you. So let's talk a bit. And we just talk about business. Walking wow. up across the lawn in the neighborhood. And, and that was it. And three days, I had three days to learn that first show, my first professional gig ever. Only three days to learn that show. And um, I just from practicing with records and everything at home and playing in nightclubs, I gained memory retention and uh, how to learn things quick and fast. Wow. Because I don't read music. People mm-hmm. think I have to read music. I don't read the music. So, so how many years to learn some that? Um, memory retention. Since six years old, playing and listening to records, figuring things out. I was playing, I started at six on one marching snare drum. Mm-hmm. By the time I was 10 years old, on my eighth birthday, I got an addition to the set. By the time I was 10 years old, I was playing in nightclubs with my brother band, making money at 10. Wow. I've been working, making music, and like, making money since 10 years old at so nightclubs. You, so you never worked for anybody? No. Wow. Not, not really work, work, per se. I did a couple of part-time things, and it wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I tried it out, and I said, no, i got to play my music. Mm-hmm. So I really earnest, and while I was doing those, for a few months, I tried to ask him, no, well, this kind of work not for me. I love playing my drums. Yeah. But while I was doing those, I was still gigging around time right. and wanted. So I never gave up on me. I never at one time, at any time, gave up music. Because it was who I am. Mm-hmm. And I felt it in my spirit. Spirit so deep and solid. And my identity was established in my spirit that I was meant to do this. And I'm a musician and a drummer. And the entertainment is my field I was designed by God to do because That's he right. gave me this gift. Mm-hmm. And then by getting me with the Jackson Brothers so quickly. First of all, the story of getting me to the Jackson Brothers by getting lost to be found was miraculous Mm -hmm. and it was destiny fulfilled. God intention. Because I couldn't find it on my own in the valley. So I said, I'm going to have to help this dude out a little bit. Let me get him lost. But John, let me ask you a question. So now um, the biggest tour that you were on with Michael Jackson was the one in 1984 when it was just Thriller and all that? That was a victory tour with him and yeah. brothers. Yeah, that was the biggest tour. But then um, they tell me the stage we had on the um, history tour was bigger than the victory tour. Wow. And, you know, that was like 290 feet across. And, uh, and No, 210 feet across. 90 feet deep. It was huge. Huge bike was production. It took, it took it was 80 trailers or something like that. It was like three Antonov Russian planes. Oh, it was, it was full insane. set of doors. It was you know, Antonov was the biggest plane. These people don't know the biggest plane in the world. Wow. And we had three of them wow. hauling just equipment around. Wow. And it was packed to the doors, they had to shut the doors. That's how much stuff they had started on the victory tour. On the history, the history tour. How many cities you mean? I can't remember how many cities. Is that insane? Is that it was amazing, yeah. It was wow. like two years broken into two segments and the, the history tour. Wow. The victory tour was like five months of doing shows around. The US never went to Europe because it's the the uh, the new stat was too big ship all that stuff over there. They, at that time in 84, mind you, you know, it was just huge expense they didn't want to take. The promoters it was hard to book wow. that show in Europe. It wow. was such a huge expense. But then by 80s, by 96, you know, uh, things that they got under control and Michael could do a huge drill with his sponsors. 
Now you said you have a solo album coming out, right? Yeah, I got solo music coming out. And, and what is it coming out? Um, we're trying to get it together, together uh, by the first of the year. Mm -hmm. Some things are that's coming out. I got a Christmas album coming out later this year, mm -hmm. and I've been handing out, but I'm push promoting and producing it more and um, putting it out this by Christmas season. Mm -hmm. I have anthem music. I call it uh, uh, Millennium New Millennium Anthem songs, mm -hmm. groove anthems, nothing like you've ever heard before. Mm -hmm. I got those in the uh, new. It's in the positive spirit, preaching of and teaching and reminding people of the greatness of the freedom that we have. For me to become and be who I want to be, I chose as a little boy to be. For you to become Shirai and more, to be, uh, you become Shirai and show, mm -hmm. and be successful at your show. And other people, you know, President Obama to become a president, first black president ever. The freedoms of this country and all these things that happen. Michael, you become Michael. Mm -hmm. You know, we just have a great blessing in the freedoms that we're allowed, mm -hmm. that the Constitution gave us. We sometimes get caught into differences, difference between us and the society. We get mired in that, and we forget the overall blessing that we're free people and a free nation. And there's a lot of countries around the world which and citizens that are oppressed and wish to God they could be free. They can't do anything without being dictated to. And so I've all my life been in so happy and excited to be able to express myself the way I do. And, uh, and have freedom to do whatever I choose to do in this country. So I, I focus on trying to promote and give people a tap on the shoulder that freedom means a lot more than the differences we're fighting over. That's correct. That if we all come together and celebrate that, then I think it will, it will distract us from distract us from the other things, the aspects of, of life and society that we're making so much difference. Let's focus on the similarity the sameness we have. We all human beings, right? And two eyes and one nose, one mouth, two ears, right. and two limbs, arms, two legs, limbs. And um, and we should focus on us all being human beings as one race, not different races That's categorized right. by man, kind of to judge one another by. But God created one race. Mm -hmm. He didn't create black race, he created man created the difference of time with the right, 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 right. So we all yeah. be the same man. So let's let's enjoy the freedom given and make the most of it. So, so John, oh, it's, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show, John. I want to ask you one last question and get you out of here, but I'm so thankful. Um, also, say this statement first. You have a beautiful fiance. Yes. Um, congratulations to you. Thank you very um, much. When is big day? We're trying to make it like uh, nothing special, nothing time in the next couple months. Mm -hmm. We want to get married. And this is, I leave it up to her. She's, uh, she wants to get married in a low-key fashion, just to her and I in front of uh, someone with the power to make us husband. And Wife. Awesome. So awesome. No big fancy fanfare. And this is the way she wants. I gave I gave it the power wow. up to her. She decided that she decided to do a private thing. She said, I just want to be married to you. I don't need all of that. No yeah. invitation, the cake, the limousines and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want to be married to you. So that, that was okay. Such a blessing. Um, you are both blessed to have each other. Um, that's a wonderful thing. So Jonathan, um, a lot of fans out here want to know where they can be able to keep up with you and your events and all the things you have to They can go to my website. Our website is jmbb.world. Okay. jmbb.world. My website. Not sugarfoot.com? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did have that at one time. But uh, and my, my, my wonderful fiance, she owns my social media. She designed all my sites. Wow. When you go to that site, you see the incredible work she's done. Uh, she, she puts together all my channels, my Instagram, and stuff. She confers with me with the fans or ladies of the fans, questions and stuff. So I'm involved with that. But as for us, so putting together the physical sites and her interaction with the sites. She's from Silicon Valley. She does all that stuff. So she, she hooks me up. So I'm, I'm present in the, in, in the media world and Facebook, as well as Instagram, as well as my website, and many of us starting my, um, my, uh, my, uh, my own uh, membership site as well, yeah. Patreon site. Awesome. So a lot of things going on. This man is just a, it's awesome to have him on the show. I really appreciate him stopping by. Wish him the best in his marriage, as well as his career. Um, I hope the man has just been doing it all. We're so thankful that he stopped by the show. Our show. Um, also, before we go, um, I want to give a kudos to uh, Mel Carter. He does have a track that he um, sent me, and you're going you're to see it after the show. We're going to play his track. This is an anthem to stop the violence of the killing and the murder. Even though the man has been in the industry for almost 65 years, he's still recording great tracks. I want to thank all my guests who stopped by the show. Uh, Jasmine Monique, um, who's a wonderful model, six foot four, doing her thing. 
Also, the um, illustrious um, Perry White, who stopped by the show as well, with his beautiful garments, as well as all the big things he's doing. And then, of course, the I iconic drummer himself, Mr. Jonathan um, Moffitt, stopping by the show. As well as my cameraman, Mark Walker, he's such a hilarious comedian. As well as my assistant, Emma, and all those who helped make the Sherrard show what it is now. I'm Sherrard, stay tuned for our next episode, where we're going to have Lawrence Tate, as well as um, Tina Knowles stop by the show. So we'll see you all next time. In the meantime, stay blessed. See you next week.